Welcome to Renoise 3.3. You have chosen, or been chosen, to start using the finest music software of all time. I thought so highly of Renoise myself that I've been using it for eight years, and I can't imagine ever going to anything else. This guide is intended to familiarize you with all the basics you need to get started writing your own songs in Renoise. I'm going to assume you have some really basic music knowledge, just stuff like notes and beats, nothing much further than that though. And even if you've never made music on the computer before, I hope by the end of this guide you know enough about Renoise that you can start writing, sequencing, and mixing your own music. So the first thing you're probably thinking when you open Renoise for the first time ever is, what is all this stuff? Um, you know, like, what are all these dashes? What are all these dots? How do I do anything? If you've never used a tracker before, it's very alien, even if you're coming from other kinds of music software. But it's pretty simple to learn, really. So to get started, I'm just going to give an overview, naming all the different parts and pointing them out. Over here in the top left is the transport. Up here in the top right is your instrument window. Below it is your browser. Big thing in the middle is the pattern editor, where all the magic happens. Click this P arrow M and you can pop open the pattern matrix, which is how you sequence your song. And down here at the bottom is your DSP effects panel, which you can also switch to the automation tab. Now starting with the transport, this is pretty standard here. You've got your play button, pattern loop, stop and record or edit mode. Which you can also engage by pressing the escape key. Here is the follow player position button. If you leave this on by default, then the screen will follow your player. If you turn it off, there it goes. It's free. So there's reasons to have it off. There's reasons to have it on. Change it whenever you want. Next to it is a metronome, which does, you know, metronome stuff. Next we have the block loop button and how much of the pattern you want to loop. I don't really like this. I can't figure out how to change where it starts and ends. I always end up turning it on on accident. So it's not too important. Here you have your BPM, which is just, you know, the tempo of your song. And then this one is important though, the lines per beat. This is the resolution of the song you're working on. So say, since I'm at four lines per beat, that means one, two, three, four. These are all sixteenth notes that go into every beat. And that's how close you can write. But if you raise this to eight, now they're all thirty second notes that you can write in like that. If you raise this to twelve, now you can do triplets easier. Sixteen, you can get super goofy with it. I usually keep it around eight or twelve. You'll figure out what you like. Next is the set velocity button. Basically when this is enabled, you can choose a certain velocity for notes to have. So normally it just plays maximum volume. Turn it on. Now it gives you the velocity you've specified. And uh, octave, which, you know, it sets your keyboard octave. Here's the pattern editor in the middle. This is basically your main event. You're going to be spending most of your time here. You've got your tracks. By default, you start with eight. They're broken down into note lanes, FX lanes, and volume, pan, and delay lanes that you can turn on and off. So how do you actually write notes, though? First of all, you need to have edit mode enabled. You can see that it's on by this red border on the pattern editor. Now you use your computer keyboard, like a MIDI keyboard, unless you have a MIDI keyboard, then you can use that. I'm on a QWERTY keyboard, so Q is C, 2 is C sharp, stuff like that. Make sure you have an instrument loaded to play it on, or it won't actually play. Now then, ta-da. But now, how do you stop the note, right? This is where note offs come into play, by using the A key on a QWERTY keyboard, or caps lock on, I think, any keyboard. You can stop the note whenever you want, at the exact time you punch it in. So, that's super critical to making any kind of music at all in this program. Super simple, just weird to figure out at first.
this is one part I forgot for the pattern editor. Down here you have your step skip, which basically if it's set to one like default, then you will only go one thing ahead at a time. If it's set to zero, the player position stays exactly where you are. You can change it, so for example, now I can skip two lines at a time really fast. Now I can skip four, etc, etc. There's a shortcut for this on the keyboard, control, and then a number from the top. So control four, control two, stuff like that. Um, this makes writing just super fast. Now to get to the pattern matrix, you'll have to open it up using this P arrow M button on the left. As you can see, it's a bunch of empty blocks right now. When there's data inside a pattern block, you get one of these pattern blocks. You can add, subtract, whatever you want with them. Also inside here, these black boxes to your left are your song position. This number is always the same. However, these colored boxes over here are your pattern number, which you can change to repeat an earlier pattern pretty easily. Another way you can do that is hold the pattern block you want to copy, click and drag it, then hold control, and unclick it, and you've got it copied. An even faster way than that is to just look at the bottom here where the icon changes, drag it down, and you've cloned that pattern. But be aware, if you're trying to do this with multiple patterns with different things in them, even if you select it all, it will only copy over the last one. So be aware of that. If you need to copy two different patterns, it's better to use the control thing. You can use that for as many as you like. And yeah. Something else cool in here, you can add a section, which is basically just a marker for yourself to tell you things about the song. You know, there's the bridge, there's the chorus, whatever. What you can also do is drag this little line and you've got a comment section. Works the same as programming comments. These don't affect anything, they're just for your own reference. I like to use these for lyrics. Whenever I'm recording, just have them handy right there with everything else I'm working on. There's one last part of the pattern editor you might have noticed. So close this and then there's a A arrow E button over to the right which opens your advanced editor. This is all pretty self-explanatory. It gets a little tricky to use some of this stuff, but it's all very useful for changing a certain amount of your song in a specific way. It's very powerful stuff. Now up here in the top right, you saw I've already put something in here, is your instrument window. It is very closely linked to the browser. You can take uh, something out of your browser, double click it on an empty slot, and boom. You can click and drag stuff to a spot, boom, you got it. Now if you're a VST fiend like me, you're probably wondering, how do I get to those? So to do that, you click this triangle at Instrument Properties, go to No Plugin Loaded, and bam. You can pick whichever VST you want from the list of all the ones you have installed. The options here are for macros and phrasing, which are kind of advanced. I might get into them in a later video, but right now there's not much I can tell you about them. Now down here at the bottom, we have our effects and automation tabs. The effects panel gives you basically access to all your built-in and VST DSP effects. Just change the sound, put some distortion on stuff, put some filters, all that goodness that you're looking for. Now, clicking this takes you over to the automation window, which I'm not wild about. I prefer to do automation by just keying it into my patterns in the effects column, but you can still use this. Say you want to adjust the cutoff on here, you can draw points, you can make lines, you can set the value of whatever point individually like that. You can set what kind of stuff you're drawing. It's pretty good. Here in the top right of the pattern editor, you'll find your scopes. This one is a frequency analyzer, spectrum analyzer, whatever you call it. You can open a phase view 
I forget what this is called, but it shows you the stereo space of your song. You can change this to just uh, master scopes for the whole song. This triangles button opens scopes for every track individually. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Now, going back to the big tabs on this side of the pattern editor, you can switch to the mixer, which is where it's a mixer, basically. You know, you've got your panning, solo, mute, volume fader, and down here you can set track delay or look ahead, which is pretty neat. If you have effects enabled on your channels here, you can actually show sliders on them and control them from the mixer, which is pretty cool. There are also certain parameters for your whole song that will only show up on the master channel of the mixer. Your DC filter, soft clipping, and auto gain, along with the groove settings, where you can set a swing pattern for your song, just to give it some zest, I don't know. This button here also lets you choose between whether these volume and panning changes you're making take effect before or after your effects chain. So, I just had this before, I switch over, now this is after. Likewise, you can toggle visibility for all the different elements over here. If you don't want to see some of this stuff for whatever reason. So, that's pretty much all there is to the mixer. Let's hop over to the sampler tab now, which is one of Renoise's most powerful assets. This thing is awesome, you can do so much with it. Let's start on the left here with your sample bank. This is all the samples for your whole instrument. So say I load something in, a little loop like this. Now it's there. If I want to add another one, I can just click and drag it from here. You have modulation routing inside the sampler, FX routing inside the sampler. And down here, pretty critical, your sample properties panel. This gives you the volume of that individual sample, the panning, transpose to change the pitch, uh, fine tune, change the pitch, but not as much. And down here, you've got beat sync, which is pretty critical. Basically, it syncs your sample to the amount of lines you specify right there. So I set it to 64, got kind of a slow song, so it slows it down. Speed that up. It stays locked however you want to change the tempo. It's pretty awesome. Uh, this T will transpose the sample to match what you just set it to, so that even if you turn it off, it remains at that pitch. Or, now, this is new, you can use actual time stretching. I haven't really messed with this, I kind of just like pitching stuff or chopping it up. Here you have the trigger option, which, uh, ignores note off messages so basically the note will just keep playing after a note off you have the loop mode which you can set forward backward ping pong and this button makes it so that the loop has to finish before it stops playing even if it's got a note off stopping it mute group i'm sorry but i don't really know what this does New note action, basically if a note is interrupted by the same note on the same instrument, you can choose whether you want it to cut itself off, whether you want it to react as if there was a note off right there, or whether you want it to just continue playing. And here we have minor fade in and fade out, so this is useful, say, if you kind of didn't cut your sample too well, uh, and there's clicking at the beginning of the end. What you can do is this. It's the same as fading it in and out really slightly at the ends, just in case you didn't quite hit the zero point when you were cutting it. Now for auto seek, the best way I can explain this is to just give you an example. So when I put a sample down and I want to hear it, I've got to start it from the beginning, right? If I want to start it halfway, it doesn't play at all. Unless I go into the sampler, enable auto seek, start from halfway again. See, I don't have to start from the beginning. When you're using really long samples, it's a godsend. Now the tabs here start with phrases, which I'm not too familiar with. I wouldn't upgrade Renoise for the longest time, so 
I didn't start messing with this feature <laughs> until really recently because it's still pretty new. I was on 2.8 for a while before I finally caved in and upgraded to 3.3. Uh, here we've got the key zones, which shows you where your sample is going to sit on the keyboard. Now, let's throw some more stuff in here so I can show you how it actually works. The main shortcuts to use here are to make a drum kit, which you can also press Ctrl D. It puts all your samples in basically a drum kit format. They're all on their own individual keys. You have distribute individually, which gives them all an equal amount of the keyboard. And finally you have layer, which makes them all play over each other. Naturally, you can adjust all this manually. Um, let's go over to the waveform tab now. This is really where the party happens. So, I'm going to give you a quick example of just how fast you can slice up like a drum break or a sample and renoise. So, let's get the slicer equipped. Let's put this first slice marker down. Where does the next sample start? Around here. We want to find a zero point to cut it at. Where there's no white line, just a gray on both parts. Uh, we're gonna have to make sure this is actually set to drum kit mapping. It is. I don't know what I was tweaking about. So zoom in like this, put the cut at the zero point. Zoom in like this, put the cut at the zero point. I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse to do this, but you can also use this bar at the bottom, drag around if you can't use your scroll wheel for some reason. It happens. I didn't have a scroll wheel for ages. And now we can see. You can repeat that for the whole sample really fast, really easy, really powerful. Of note here is the draw function for drawing your own waveform in. You know, that's something fun you can do, I guess. The adjust button, which lets you change how many channels, mono or stereo, your sample rate, your bit depth. You've got the slice button, which I just showed you. You've got the auto slice button, which is, um, it's the computer looking for transients itself without having any musical context. So doing stuff manually is just always going to sound better than trusting this. If you do decide to trust it though, or just because it makes a good jumping off point for editing a really long sample, you can adjust the sensitivity of it here. It'll give you more or less slices. This button right here makes it so that triggered slices stop playing at the beginning of the next slice. What does that mean? Well, with it off, my slices just keep going, but with it on, they end uh, where the next marker begins. Down here at the bottom we have a lot of useful buttons. We have the cut selection, delete selection, just gets rid of stuff. We have the crop to selection, which you select something, hit this, there it goes. We have adjust volume, which does what it says on the tin. Normalize, which sets the sample to as loud as it can get without clipping. Insert silence, which you select an area, silence. Uh, these two are very important. Fade in and fade out. The little waves with the angles over them. We've got reverse here, which lets you reverse the whole sample or a selection of it. We've got adjust DC offset for, I don't know, when that's a problem you need to fix. Invert phase swap stereo channels. This here TFX gives you your track effects. It sticks them on there. So if I've got some effects on my sample, normally they're not applied here in the sampler. Say I've got this filter. I want to cut out the high end of the sample. Um, it's not actually like that. It hasn't changed anything here, but pressing this TFX button will apply that change to the sample. This toggle lets you choose whether you're using track DSP or sampler instrument DSP, which you can adjust over here. We'll get to that. Uh, smooth button, which lets you just smooth out your waveform. 
create cross-fading loop. It makes a cross-fading loop, what can I say? And here are the same loop options from over in the sample properties tab. This is a key you should not have on or off on accident. I like to leave it off. It makes it so whichever sample you have highlighted is the only one that'll play, even if you have different key zones set. It shows you this little warning, but it's very small text. It's easy to miss, so generally leave this off so you know how your sample will work in the actual pattern editor. Next, we've got a play select area stop pre here on master or pre here on the track you have selected. You press enter to pre here your sample. This modulation tab, I'm sorry, this is kind of new to me. I've never used it before. I know you can basically make envelopes for different parameters somehow. I'm really not sure. Sorry, I might get back to this in another video. The FX tab here lets you create an effects chain inside your instrument, not having to put it out on the mixer or the pattern editor. So I can put chorus on these drums for whatever reason and have that just happen inside of the instrument, which I don't know, it's neat. And the final two tabs of the main window are the plugin tab, which lets you get to your VSTs and lets you mess around with them when you are actually got them open. As you can see the editor spawns in here. You have another phrases window. And yeah, not too much going on here really. And the MIDI tab, which I don't really use a MIDI keyboard very often, so I can't tell you what <laughs> most of this stuff does. But yeah that's basically all the fundamentals of this whole program so i'm going to take you through just how fast it is to make a song in renoise to start tracking starting with uh some drum breaks i have already sliced up which i'll put in the description of this video where to get it then we'll add just synth one why not go over here Start record mode. Turn off these effects. I don't know why they're still on. We've got that. We want it to keep going. We'll copy it down here. We want this a little different. Copy these two. Now that whole thing repeats, and if we want a little melody... So, as you can see, you can pretty much write stuff like drum patterns as fast as you can imagine them in Renoise. And that's one of the things that's kept me using this for so long, kept me liking it so much. I hope you give it a try, I hope you make some stuff, and I hope you have fun. That's pretty much it, I guess. So, thanks for watching. If you'd like to support more videos like this, you can go to calibration with a k.bandcamp.com. I'll link that in the description to buy some of my music, you know. You can download it for free, too. It doesn't matter. And uh, before I go, here's another song I may or may not ever finish.